guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter with another kind of behind the scenes look of a production I was recently doing. And by recently, I mean this summer, which, you know, we're almost into 2015. But you guys really responded well to that last video I did about the uh, GH4 corporate shoot. And so I wanted to bring more content like that to you guys. So let's just jump straight in. This was a music video I filmed over the summer. And uh, it was with James and the Drifters. You can check them out at jamesandthedrifters.com. It was for their song Foxtrot from All That Gold. And uh, you can watch it in its entirety underneath this video at dslrvideoshooter.com that you're currently watching. Or you can hop over to fourthfoundry.com and scroll down. And you'll see the uh, music video there. So really enjoyed working with these guys. They were fantastic. It's a, a group of five guys. And um, just had a blast working with them. So I want to share as many details with you as possible to kind of give you an idea of what it took to put this together. And uh, so the budget for this, I'll just come out and say it, it was $1,500, which is a little, very low actually, but um, I really wanted to work with these guys. And so I, I took them up on their offer and um, you know, they're five great artists with some really good music and uh, they have a great look to them, which we'll see in the music video. Um, so when you have that kind of opportunity, it's something, you know, I thought was worth jumping on, especially since I also really needed to put the Sony a7S to work so I could really get a, get a good experience with it and, uh, use that for my review, which you can also check out at dslrvideoshooter.com. So the way this worked out is we had two afternoons back to back. And um, we wanted to do more than just a performance. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with performance music videos, but that's where the band is just, or, you know, the artist is just performing and uh, you throw something together. So we wanted something narrative to go along with it. So I encourage you to watch the whole music video before continuing here. But uh, the way it worked out is I ended up scheduling all the narrative stuff on the first day. Then the second day we actually did the performance. And for the narrative, we just did something really simple. We, we decided to have each of the band members um, start out in different locations, and then they all end up in the same location at the end of the music video. And what I loved about this whole shoot is uh, it was pretty complex, you know, managing five band members and making sure I get all the coverage. And it was just me. I didn't have any assistant with me. Um, but it really worked out well, and I enjoyed kind of that gorilla, really fast-moving uh, shooting pace. So if we look here, and, you know, I'm not going to say, just disclaimer, I'm not the best editor in the world. Um, I've been using Final Cut X for a mm, year or two. So, you know, there's some of you out there who are going to think there's way better ways to do this, but this is just how it worked out. Um, so I have a library here with, with everything for the music video, and then... Um, two events. Uh, one was for the first day, which is all the narrative stuff. So you can see here I've organized it. Um, so here's, you know, some of uh, the one band member getting there via boat, how everyone ends up at the end of the day by the campfire. And then we had two guys uh, travel in one vehicle, which you can see here, and then a, another one um, in a separate vehicle and his car ends up breaking down and then, you know, the other guys pick him up. And then finally, uh, the lead singer uh, is running. So those are the, the different setups. Um, the first thing we did in the day was actually all this running stuff. So we all this was filmed at a lake house and around that area in Indiana. And uh, so we can see here, I just got some coverage. All this is slow motion, so it, it, it turned out really great. Just a couple shots here and there, some quick coverage, tying the shoes. And what you're seeing is ungraded stuff and uh, and then some slow motion running stuff. You know, that's all well and dandy. So this was all on the GH4. Um, I encourage you to check the music video out and see if you can pick out which shots were A7S or GH4. So I would encourage you to do that now. If you're going to continue watching uh, this video, it ended up where I did all external shots of the GH4 and then all the interior performance stuff with the a7s and these two cameras work really really well together because the gh4 has 4k and shoots fantastic slow motion but you know it's not great at low light so it's perfect for this outdoorsy stuff and then the a7s was fantastic for this kind of stuff the indoor lots of shallow depth of field and uh, i didn't put a lot of light in this room so it was great because i could 
do whatever I wanted with the ISO and it didn't really matter. Okay, so first setup, um, pretty simple sticks for the first little bit. And then these running shots, um, we literally pulled up, shot for maybe four minutes and then got back in the car. So the way I filmed this stuff, like right here, this low shot of the running, you can see it's a little handheld, um, but it's, it's pretty stable. And all I did was plop the camera on some sandbags. So um, I'll put a link to everything we're talking about today at dslrvideoshooter.com. Here's the sandbags. I just plopped one on the ground and uh, just dropped the, the camera right on top of it. And that worked out really well. So, you know, nice, uh, not sticks locked off shot, but you can kind of get some natural looking, you know, handheld business there. So that was the first, first thing we filmed. Um, and then there's a lot, a lot of car stuff. And, uh, so we just got the two guys and the important part is just coverage, um, and filming this stuff to, to in your head, have it all planned out. Otherwise this would have been a nightmare. So just getting a shot of the guys getting in the vehicle, a shot of the bass player getting in his vehicle, slapping a guitar in there. And uh, so all this stuff. So the way you want to do it is you don't want to film this chronologically. So you don't want to plan everything in your head as to exactly how the music video goes and then shoot, you know, these guys getting in their car, then this guy getting in his car. You want to shoot everything involving these two guys all together. Then you want to switch to your um, next scene and film everything involving, um, you know, this character. And uh, that allows me to um, save a ton of time because if we were going back and forth, it would have been a nightmare. So um, all this stuff was, I believe, handheld on the GH4. And, uh, you know, that smaller sensor really behaves well. Um, the only thing I didn't really like about this is there's one shot right here where you can see I missed focus. Um, and again, everything we're seeing here, all this was filmed in an afternoon. And so we were flying to get everything done. Um, but the GH4 did really well. And you can see it even did pretty decent on these uh, darker interior shots um, in the actual vehicle. So, so, and if we jump over to the boat stuff, this was kind of fun. Um, it's kind of funny cause there's a motor on this boat, but we ended up, you know, doing some rowing stuff again, slow motion. This is on a longer lens, obviously. And that brings me to lenses. I'm going to hop over to some images here. Uh, lens wise, these are the three lenses I use for the entire shoot. We had a Nikon 17 to 35, a 28 to 70 and an 80 to 200. All these are F 2.8 constant aperture. You can see they have, um, obviously, um, manual aperture here. So I use these with speed boosters on the, uh, GH four, and then just a standard adapter on the a seven S, um, to cage these puppies. I had the wooden camera cage for the GH four and there's another GH four right here, but, uh, I put the a seven S in this cage, which is the Wally Max Pro. It's a lot more affordable than the, the wooden camera. And uh, both these cages did really well and gave me a little bit of stability. As we'll see later, I wish I had more stability for the A7S, but that's kind of a look at the, the camera packages. So let's see, we've got uh, this shot here, this, this whole sequence. Um, again, we just had him, you'll see in the music video, but uh, just getting the whole coverage of him uh, you know, setting the boat up to take off, taking off, um, just had him just roll around and got some different shots there and, uh, then had him come back toward shore and you'll see in the music video how this all ties together. So that was the narrative stuff. That was all straight, pretty straightforward. It all worked out well. We can kind of see some of this stuff if we play parts of the music video here. So we've got, uh, the runner preparing jump a little farther ahead and see some of the performance we'll talk about in a second. Here we go with the boat sequence. Pretty straightforward stuff. And it graded really nice lady. This stuff turned out great. I really like uh, the lighting. This day was actually really overcast, which um, sucked and worked really well at the same time. You can see that the soft lighting is just beautiful. Um, no nasty, harsh lighting. It was so hot those two days too. 
Um, the only issue is, you know, we're, it, the song is kind of a summery, you know, kind of vibe. So you would hope it would be kind of sunny and, and really nice, but it was a little overcast. So some of those shots um, outside didn't turn out as cheerful as I may have liked, but, uh, but it worked out in the end. So the second day, this was um, all the performance stuff, which we can see here. And um, this was a headache to think through because there's so many people involved. So um, you have five guys and then you have to get coverage of each of them. And you also want some, you know, what we call two shots or three shots where you have a couple guys in the shot together. And then you want some detail shots like uh, like this where you have you know, close of a, of a guitar or, you know, the drums or whatever. So here's an example of the two shot I was talking about a second ago. And then you want, you know, some, uh, some different, you know, mixing it up so you don't have the same shots through the whole music video. So it's a ton of coverage. And the way I did this is we just buckled down for an entire afternoon and I had them just play through the song multiple times in a row and I just switched around. So I would do, uh, Let's see, find an example. So here we have, um, you know, one of the guys. I would shoot this. This is what I would call my dynamic shot. So it's not consistent. So you can see here, uh, I've got a, you know, shot of the guitar. Then I pan up. Um, and then later on, I zoom out. I'm all over the place. So I do one dynamic just to give us something that's, you know, alive and moving around. I do one safety. So it's a locked off shot. Um, that's consistent all the way through like a medium or wide shot. And then I do a tight shot. So just all this stuff right here, just on the guitar. And if they did singing, I would do one where it would be, um, you know, a close up of them singing. So for, if we go back to the beginning here, here I have this, this whole take where it's nothing but the lead singer singing, uh, and then a whole take of nothing but the guitar. So you got to think through all that stuff and think about the actual song. So the lead singer is going to be in a lot. So we want to make sure we get lots of coverage of him. Um, the bass player isn't going to be as much. So you could save a little time by not getting a ton of him. So here I have one take of just um, the bridge where he plays a lot. And then I've got a dynamic wide, which is, you know, again, like we talked about earlier, it's all over the place. So you got to do that for the whole thing. And then for the actual wide establishing shot, I did three different versions. One was a safety. So this is just completely locked off roughly. It's handheld um, through the whole whole music video. And if the framing looks weird here, it's because uh, the final music video, as you can see here, is a, uh, a widescreen, you know, two, three, five. So uh, the framing is going to look a little off. But uh, so this shot, not a lot happens. You know, we just stay wide to make sure we have the entire song consistently shot with one shot. And the reason for this is let's say you have your editing and you find out that there's this one point in the song where you don't have anybody or everybody screwed up at the same point. You can go back to your safety. So you want to make sure you always get a safety. So that was the safety. And then I did what I called the dynamic wide. So you can see here, I'm changing up framing a lot. You know, we start like this, we're, we're moving around. I'll just play some of this. Um, we're just all over the place. So this is just something else to cut to. And we have some movement. So all our shots aren't just static shots of the actual band. And then I did um, just kind of an all out crazy camera move. Um, take. So let me see if I can find a good portion here. Uh, let's jump through some of this stuff. I think we use it in the music video. And the reason for this is um, fun stuff like this. So there's a shot here, not this one, but the very next one right here where I pull the camera through all these stands and we're using a wide angle lens. So it, it kind of created this cool effect. And um, it's just nice to have shots like this to kind of open up the space for the beginning of the music video where we're establishing characters and all that kind of thing. So, um, so that's the reason for having a kind of dynamic wide. So make sure you give yourself at least two establishing shots. One is a safety and try not to be too crazy. Make sure you get everybody. And then one can be a dynamic wide, uh, which is something like this where you're just 
playing with it, but it's still, you know, a wide shot at the end of the day. So this whole day was nothing but going through and getting all of the shots and all the coverage. So you can see if I open this up on the left here, I broke it down to band members. And that brings us to how in the world I linked all this together. And I used uh, Final Cut's multi-cam. So you can create um, different camera angles. And so here I have you know, my wide safety. You can see here, I've got uh, wide dynamic one, wide dynamic two. Um, K1 for Kyle, who's the, the lead singer. Uh, you can see I've labeled all of these specific names. So we can see here, um, I've got uh, K, which stands for Kyle, CU for close up one. So this is his first close up. We have a second close up. Um, and then the different, uh, different band names. And each of these letters stands for something. So I've got, you know, BW for, um, you know, the, the person's name and then wide. M stands for medium. So you put all this stuff together. Uh, Multicam can kind of automatically throw it together for you. And then I have the actual track here. A problem I came up with was we had a hard time linking the song together. And that's because I don't think I spent enough time working with um, the drummer to make sure we had the exact same frequency and everything put together. So <laughs> when I got in to edit all this, the footage wasn't matching up to the original song. And if you looked at all the footage, it matched perfectly. But when you looked at the footage with the actual track that they gave me, it wouldn't match up. So um, a trick that worked, and it was really weird, but if I um, slowed the song down to 99.25%, it matched. So it's really weird. I used Audacity to, to do that, but that solved all my issues. And then from here... I could dump this entire multicam clip into a project and uh, then go through and get a rough cut of just the performance. And then once I had just the performance, which you can see down here, um, the I've got the music at the very bottom, and then this first track here is all performance. This next track at the top is all, you know, B-roll um, of the actual narrative stuff we shot. So... Once I got all that stuff linked, I could finally sit down and do a rough cut then I would go through and do a fine cut and then I would go through and add all the B-roll and play with, you know, how I wanted things timed. When do you go from, you know, narrative stuff like this and cut back to performance stuff, making sure you have a nice mix of, you know, the people and the, and the instruments. And uh, it turned out really well. Um, so you can check out the whole music video. So there's a bunch of things I would have done differently if I had to do this over again. The first thing would have been to really make sure I get the sound sync down and uh, work with them to make sure that, uh, you know, all their tickers are set so that we can perfectly match the song in post. And, um, you know, that's something I didn't really spend a lot of time on. And again, it's pretty hectic. It's just me and I'm managing five guys. So um, it's easy to uh, forget things. So just having a checklist to make sure that gets done. And uh, the other thing I would have done differently is, you know, these guys were great, but, you know, it can get pretty boring when you're playing the same song for the you know 20th time. And one thing I, I noticed in post was um, as they got bored, they would start to kind of go off of the consistency. They would, they would, you know, one guy would just kind of fiddle around with the song differently on his guitar because he's bored and he wants to mix it up. The problem is when you're filming that, it doesn't match up with the original song. So really making sure that much as it sucks, guys, we got to keep this consistent and make sure they understand that. Um, so making sure that they, through the bridge, everyone's doing the exact same thing as much as possible. The other thing I learned was um, I wish I had spent more time evenly lighting this main room that they were in. So you can see, let's jump out to a wide shot here. See if I can find a good one. Something like this. You can see here, um, we've got, you know, good lighting here and here and certain places, but I've got this spike up here. I've got this, obviously all this light coming through the window and, um, it created kind of a mess. You can see here it's way blown out and overexposed. So I wish I had spent a little more time to kind of lock some of that stuff down and dealing with the lighting overall, it turned out well. Um, it did help bringing some extra light in. So originally this room, let me skip to the end of the music video here. There's a shot of the room. There we go. Perfect. Um, originally this room, 
you know, it was really dark over here and then, you know, a ton of light from this window. So what I did is you don't see it, but there's a light stand to the right of the shot here with an Alzo 3000 light, which is right here, one of these guys. And uh, I love this thing, high output. So what I did is I just hit the ceiling with it and that kind of um, helped fill in the rest of this room. And then the other lights, and that's the beauty of music videos is there's so much stuff on this set. You don't even notice, but right here I've got a little torch LED light. Um, one of these guys. I love these things. I've got two of them, use them all the time. So I've got one right there and then I've got another one right there. You can't see it, but it's in the back on this little table hitting that wall. So those two little lights help kind of create some uh, dynamic back there. Otherwise this whole thing was just flat. So if I had to do it over, I would have brought more light in and then I would have uh, kind of uh, used some scrims and, and knocked this light down. Um, so that wouldn't have been so overpowering, but uh, just the nature of the beast, I wasn't able to really um, make that happen. Another thing I would have done would have been to stabilize the A7S a little better. You can see here, if I play through some of these shots, it looks handheld, but it's it's kind of jittery, like right here. I don't like jittery handheld. I like I like handheld, but when it's really jumpy and twitchy and it looks like you're shooting it on you know your cell phone or something, I don't like that. So I would have think I think a movie would have been cool for some of these shots, especially um, where I'm uh, doing stuff like this. A movie would have been really cool, um, but uh, I just didn't have one or, or time or the money to do that. So stabilizing the A7S a little better would have been nice. And that's what's really cool about this new A7 II that Sony's released is that crazy five axis stabilization. So definitely check that out. And then finally, if I had to do all this over, I would have used a waveform or false color monitor during the performance because uh, some of these shots turned out, I just nailed the exposure. Let's see if I can find a good one here. Uh, come on. Like this, this is the exposure is pretty much perfect. And then I've got a bunch that the exposure was way off. Um, unfortunately, one was the actual uh, shot of uh, Kyle here, the lead singer. So you can see this looks kind of muddy. It's because I had to really push the footage to get it back. Um, so having a monitor with waveform or something with false color would have allowed me to evenly match everything so that I could have all the shots look like this where the exposure was, was just right. So I hope this was helpful. I know it sounds like a lot. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to, um, answer those for you guys and uh it's a crazy project turned out really well make sure you watch the whole music video to see how it all came together and you can check out more reviews and tutorials at dslrvideoshooter.com thanks for watching i'll catch you guys online